Hey everybody, what's up? Alex Machakis here from Machakis Music. Coming to you guys live from the cutting room of Mystic Ground Studios here in the lovely Dallas, Texas. And uh, today it's time for another Tone Talk vlog. I'm looking to help uh, some of my students and some people online learn how to set a tube amplifier properly today for electric guitar. We're gonna be uh, going over some tips and tricks that I use in the studio. I also do some of this at home, but we're gonna be focusing only on tube amps today, no solid state. I'm gonna get into why, but after this video, you should feel really confident in getting a really great bass guitar tone. Getting to where if you pick the right guitar and you pick the right amplifier for your needs, you should be 90% of the way there with this if you follow these steps. So, let's dive into it so I can show you guys how to use your tube amp to get superior guitar tone. Hey everybody, Alex Machakas here, coming to you guys live from Mystic Ground Studios here in Dallas, Texas. I'm here in the cutting room and I'm doing another Tone Talk vlog. Tone Talk is one of my series where I, uh, as a recording session guitarist, give you guys tone tips that you can use uh, at home, on stage, or in the studio. So today we're going to be going over how to properly set up your tube amp so you can get that milky sustain, so you can get it to sound full and strong, so you can get it to sound like when you're, at the very least playing at home, you have an, an inspiring guitar tone. So by the end of this video, uh, if you follow all my steps, you should really be getting superior tone to everybody else. We're going to be going a little, diving into some Texas tone tips today. Why? I'm a Texan and that's the way we roll. All right, let's check it out, guys. So the first thing to really think about when you're going through the, the task of trying to get a really good guitar tone is to remember what is your bass. So your bass is, you really want to think of this very simple formula. A great guitar plus a great guitar instrument cable plus a great tube amplifier set correctly will equal great guitar tone. If anything in that little simple formula isn't right, if your guitar isn't in tune, if it isn't intonated to where every time you play an E chord it'll play in tune, if the strings are dead, if one of your pickups is shot, none of those things is going to make sure the guitar into the formula is great. So make sure all of that's taken care of your guitar in first before you try any of this. Second, and the most important overlooked thing, I think every guitar player should have a really great instrument cable. Uh, the brand I particularly like to use is Sabre Cable out of Austin, Texas. Matt Tapp is the owner of Sabre Cables. I've been using Sabre Cables since I was 18 years old and going out and playing for some of the first times. It, Sabre Cables have never failed me. They give the best tone. That's what I think you should be using at the very least. Um, so that's what I'm using here is a Sabre Cable. And third, you want to go into a really good tube amp. Um, tube amps are it's old style of playing guitar. It's like what you would have used back in the 50s or the 60s. It's what all our guitar heroes used when they were playing the guitar. Um, you want to use one of those. The reason why you want to use a tube amp is they give you a warmer and a much more efficient guitar tone. Um, solid state amplifiers, while inherently more affordable for you to, looking to get in to learn how to play, in the long run they're not going to do what you want to do. Uh, transistors, unfortunately, don't give you that same kind of glassy or full saturated kind of warm tone that a, uh, a tube amp can deliver. But more importantly, why I don't recommend any guitarist check out solid state amps is number one and most importantly, they're god awful expensive to repair. They just, if something breaks, the cost of the repair, taking it to a, a tech, and that's if he can fix it. Most techs don't read solid state schema schematics. They usually only look at tube amplifiers. So. It's just the cost of labor and by the time you're done with it, you could have just bought a brand new solid state amp. So that's why I tell people, save your money, spend a few hundred bucks more, get a tube amp, and if it breaks, you can repair it and it's worth it. Usually it's just you blew a tube and you shove another one in there and you're good to go. Or you just replace the whole set, depending on what the state of your tubes are in. Um, so don't do solid state for that reason. Number one, if they break, it's a pain in the ass to get them fixed and they don't, it just costs more to fix them with parts than they're worth. So. Number one, that's why you shouldn't get a tube amp. But number two, they just don't sound as good. They don't sound warm, they don't sound organic. They don't deliver that saturated, warm, yet clear tone, that biting clear tone you get from a tube amp. 
So I think for most of the recordings, if you're into Jimi Hendrix, if you're into Stevie Ray Vaughan, if you're into the Beatles, if you're into the Rolling Stones, if you're into Pink Floyd, if you're into uh, Jack White, anything out, most music, most guitar players do tube amplifiers. So this entire guide is how do you get the best tone out of a tube amplifier? Solid state just isn't going to cut it. So number one, the most important thing you want to think of before you dive into this. Remember your formula, great guitar plus great cable plus great amp equals great guitar sound. But the most important aspect of this, you've probably already settled on a guitar you like playing at home. So what you want to do, if that's your guitar, that's your whoopee, that's, you know, you have a Strat that's all beat up like this and this is doing it for you, then you want to find the right amp that goes with that guitar. So you want to consider a few things. Number one, does this amplifier, when I plug my guitar straight into the amp, does it get me 90% of the way there? Does it, does that mean I, so you have to really think about what am you trying to do? Do you want a distorted kind of Jimi Hendrix Marshall thing? If that's the case, look for something that's like a Marshall but a lower wattage. Um, looking for more Fender and Chime? Okay, then look for something in the Fender category that'll get you there. So no, each amp maker usually has different amp tones. So you just want to probably go to the store first, play, bring your guitar and go plug into a bunch of different amps until you figure out, hey, this amp plus this guitar is getting me 90% of what I hear in my head. If you can do that, you're going to be really well off. So some questions you want to think about while you're kind of shopping for amps or window shopping is how big, most importantly, how big is the room that you're going to be playing in? If it's a relatively small room, you can't be getting away with a large wattage amplifier like a 100 watt Marshall stack in the room. It's just going to be too loud. You probably won't be able to get it past three before your ears start hurting. So you want to think about, okay, what amplifier can I put in this room that will fill out the, the sound from my guitar, fill out the room, but not make my ears hurt when I'm in the room? It's still bearable. So you really want to consider that. You know, as I said before, more than likely, you know, 100 watt Marshall stack is, as much as we like the tone of those kind of amplifiers, that amp is not going to help you particularly when you're trying to get a really great guitar tone at home. So for most of my students, I recommend, hey, start out by looking at a lower wattage amplifier. Uh, what does that mean? It means the amplifier, instead of it being 100 watts of potential power, is maybe look for something 20 or under, like a great deluxe reverb, 20, 22 watts. You know, that's most, uh, I can't imagine you need anything more than that at, at home. And, and the great thing is they're light enough and they're portable to where you can take them to a gig if you want to go gig. If you want to go record, you can do that as well. So one other thing why you might want to consider lowage wattage amplifiers is they can reach the point of breakup or the point of tube distortion at a much lower volume level. So if you're in a small room and you're looking to try and get a big, you know, Stevie kind of distorted kind of strat tone like I was just doing earlier in the video, you wanna, you, you really wanna have an amplifier like that so where you can sit in the room and handle it, okay? So look at something like that, you know, like a Deluxe Reverb, a Princeton, something like that would be fantastic for home. I usually recommend checking out Deluxe Reverbs because you get a 12 inch speaker, you get a little bit more wattage and the 12 inch speaker will help deliver a little bit more bass. It'll be a little tighter. It won't be as flubby and less bass like you get with a 10 inch speaker on a single on a Princeton. So number four and uh, this is really important when setting your tube amplifier is you want to cook your tubes. So when you start to turn up the volume knob on say a Fender Deluxe Reverb, the more volume you're increasing onto that amplifier, you're causing those tubes to take on more voltage from the power source. And the more power you handle into these tubes, the more they start to cook, the more tone they start to deliver. If you have your amp set like on two, there's no way you're gonna be able to get a nice fat kind of guitar tone. It's gonna sound really anemic because you're not giving the tubes the proper amount of voltage from the wall for them to really operate at their best. So you really wanna cook your tubes. Really turn the volume up on that amplifier. When you turn up your guitar amp, I usually start on like at least five or six. If I want more, I can always add more. Right now I'm on about seven. I'm playing a deluxe reverb here in the other room in the studio. And this is usually what I'm doing at home when I'm just jamming out, you know? But the way you want to think about it is your tone should definitely be sonically pleasing at this point. So when you turn it up, it shouldn't be harsh. It shouldn't be muddy. You just want strong. You want big. 
So if you don't big, you know, if you have it on two, it won't be big. But the good news is if, if you chose a lower wattage amplifier, you can get through that volume dial and really cook those tubes and it will sound big and powerful, but you can be in the room without your ears bleeding. So there you go. And number five, after I start cooking the tubes, once I get my volume level set and I'm liking the interplay between my guitar and my volume knob, you want to start adjusting your amps EQ to the room you're playing in. Most people think this is one of the most biggest misconceptions in guitar playing. How many times have you gone and you've Googled, hey, Stevie Ray Vaughan amp settings, hey, Jack White amp settings, hey, John Mayer amp settings. That's a really misleading thing to do because really those are tweaked to, hey, they're playing in arena and they're trying to get a particular tone when they're on stage that they can hear, but also how it's going out into the venue of what it sounds like out at the back. You know, most professional guitarists in their tech, every venue, they readjust the amp. So that picture you saw on Google might have been, that might have been what they were doing on that particular night, but when they went somewhere else, let's say they went from playing outside to playing inside, that amp got adjusted to where it sounded more pleasing in the room on stage when there's people there in the crowd. So that's something you really want to think about. Um, I usually start with all my EQs at noon. This is a flat, neutral EQ setting. What that means is I'll take my treble, my mids, and my bass. I put them all at 5 o'clock, right? So that's neutral. I'm not cutting any bass. I'm not boosting any bass. I'm not cutting any treble. I'm not boosting any treble, okay? So I start there. I get my amp cooking, right, where I think it starts sounding good, and I start to play. I start getting some examples of like, hey, is this what I'm liking? I'll play for a little bit, and most importantly, I listen. At that point, if I'm not liking what I get, I adjust a little more on my high end. I might boost a little more if I want a little more sparkle. I might cut it if it's a little too harsh. If it's a little muddy, I'll pull some of that bass out. If it sounds a little tinny, I'll pull a little more bass in. So I'll start tweaking to get to where I like the sound in the room I'm playing in. And this all depends on where you set the amp in the room, where are you listening, how big is the room, where do you sit when you play guitar in terms of reference from the amp. There's a lot of variables here. So kind of try different seats where you sit in your room when you play. Try adjusting those knobs. And you're, listen to your ears. Trust your ears. Your ears will give you the right info. So when it starts sounding good, when you're making these slight EQ tweaks, it'll go, oh yeah, that's it. Save that setting. Take a picture of it on your phone. Write settings out on a piece of paper, whatever you got to do. So you know when I'm in, hey, I'm in this room at home, that's when that app is going to sound best. Okay? So that's how you want to adjust EQ settings. Then, lastly, what I do after that is I'll start adding in reverb very gradually. I treat reverb like it's a destructive effect. So I want to get the right balance of reverb between my regular guitar sound. Reverb should only enhance your guitar sound. It should never kind of envelop the whole thing to where you hear more reverb than guitar. So just start dialing in until you find that sweet spot on your amp. On the deluxe here in the other room, I'm rocking at it at about three. So it's pretty low, okay? <coughs> As for what I did for my EQ, I boosted the treble a little bit. I think my treble's on six and a half, and I cut the bass down from to about 4.5, just a little bit. It was a little mudding out, just a little bit. But what that was giving me, as I go through my pickup selector here, what that's doing is that's letting me get a wide range of different tones, yet they're all clear. And that's what you want. If you're playing a Strat, you want all the positions of your single coil pickups to really be clear and unique. You don't want every pickup to sound the same. So that's something you can do by setting your amplifier. Number six, and my last point about how to help set your amp is the reason, if you follow all these other steps, you should be able to use your volume control on your electric guitar. So if on 10 on your guitar, that amp's cooking, it's loud, that's your full distortion, you know, big tone with just the amp. But as I, you should be able to just start slowly rocking that volume down, down from 10 just a little, and you'll get subtle variations in tone. So if you combine that with the tone knobs here, on your guitar, you can roll off high end from the guitar, you can get different cleaner or more distortion from your volume knob here, you get different combination of tones from your pickup switches. Experiment with all that. If you don't set your guitar amp high, you're not going to have a wide sweep in tonal ranges. So that's the other thing, is I might set the amp high, but nine times out of ten when I'm playing, I usually am only on like eight. 
So I still have a little more. If I need a little more, I can turn my volume knob up on the guitar just a little more to give myself a little more. So I usually find the sweet spot on 7.5 or 8 on my Strat knob, and then I'll dial some in. So if I want more, I got more. I got two more clicks on the volume knob to give me a little more power. So that's my way of setting an amp, guys. Let me give you some more playing examples here, okay? Hey guys, all right, so there's our entire lesson on how you should be thinking about setting up your tube amp properly. So that's it for this particular Tone Talk blog. I'm Alex Machakis. I'm going to be peacing out of here from Mr. Ground Studios here in Dallas, Texas. Be sure to follow, like, share, and subscribe. I'm trying to build this into a pretty kick ass channel. Uh, if, remember, if you need any lessons and you like what you hear, don't be afraid to reach out. I do teach full time on top of being a session guitarist. So if you need some help and you want to get your chops up, check out machakismusic.com. You can find a way to email me and contact me, and I'd love to help you grow as a musician. For now, be sure to check out machakismusic.com slash blog for all my Machakis Music tone talk tips from a session guitar player. That's how I can help you at home on stage or in the t studio sound better. Be sure to check out all of our Tone Talk blogs at machakasmusic.com slash blog. Uh, it's tone tips from a recording session musician, myself, on how I can help you grow as a musician and sound better at home, on stage, or in the studio. 
So uh, like us at machakasmusic.com. That's our website. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash machakasmusic. You can check me out. Follow me on my Instagram at at machacotaco. Or you can follow Machakas Music at at Machakas Music Dallas and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that little bell icon. You'll get notified every time I do a new video. That's it for me, guys. I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.